Welcome to the Billable Mom Podcast, led by attorney Carrie Rinker, where we discuss working motherhood, but especially geared to professional mothers who are trying to juggle their time. Our time is precious, both at work and at home. We talk time management and productivity hacks, the struggles of being a working parent, and provide a community where other billable moms are also trying to calm the chaos six minutes at a time. Listen to stories of other working moms, but especially lawyer moms. Navigate the waters balancing career and the ever-present demands of motherhood. Hi, I'm Carrie Rinker. I'm the Billable Mom. I'm really excited for today's conversation. We have Liz Norin in the house, and uh, Liz is actually here right across town from where I'm recording this right now. I'm here in my hometown. So, Liz, why don't you introduce yourself to our listeners and a little bit about like, where you are professionally and your path to becoming a Billable Mother? Yes, so um, my name is Liz Norin, and I'm the managing partner of Dev and Dev Attorneys at Law in Shelbyville. And I practice a general practice of law. I do have a concentration, um, I think, half my practice in family law. Um, yeah, so. Why don't we back up a little bit and tell our listeners like how you ended up basically practicing law in your hometown, sort of your path, you know, full circle here. Yeah. So, um, I was a graduate of Shelbyville high school, like you, yourself. And my father was an attorney here at Dove and Dove. We, I grew up three blocks away from the law firm. So uh, I spent high school summers and breaks and college summers and breaks helping out at the firm. Uh, I knew pretty early on that I wanted to, uh, go into law. So I um, uh, went to undergrad at Illinois Wesleyan, went on to law school, graduated, and then like a lot of young attorneys wanted to check out the city. So I did an internship in St. Louis one summer, and then I landed a final internship in Chicago and then took a job in Chicago at a um, commercial boutique firm, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I was there about three, four years, and I just really didn't love living in the city. So I moved home and joined the family firm in 2004, and here we are today. So I know you're a mother of two children, and so tell us where you were professionally when you had your first child. So when I had my first child, professionally, I was, um, uh, I mean, I, I was 30, or my early 30s, so I'd been out for, you know, almost a decade practicing. Um, I, again, live very close to the firm and uh, next door to my parents, uh, very close with my, my parents. And I, uh, I, you know, just was still litigating, doing the general practice, doing the grind. Um, and then my first child came and he's turning 16 this, this weekend, if you can believe it. I cannot believe it. Time flies. Um, so did you have a maternity leave? Did you think about a maternity leave before you had a, a had a baby? How did you navigate all that? So I I didn't really have a maternity leave. It's a small firm. In fact, when I had my first son, it was just my father and then his partner who was kind of working part time. And uh, we didn't really talk about it. You know, I, the baby was coming. Um, you know, I was just going to kind of navigate, you know, organically slowing down a little bit, but still being able to, you know, appear when I needed to. I did have someone that was going to come to the house to help because I knew I wanted to nurse and I knew I wanted to be able to come back and forth as much as possible. And uh, the conclusion is I did a really bum job planning my first maternity leave. And so um, I did take maybe a couple of weeks off and then I was just, you know, back and forth between the office, you know, bring, bringing the baby with me. I had a bassinet set up next to my desk. Um, and then if I had court appearances or whatnot, you know, the baby would be with the, the gal I had at the house or my mom helped out a lot. Uh, so I didn't really have a maternity leave, so to speak. Um, because again, with a small firm, it wasn't like there was someone that was just going to pick up my caseload. Right. So in hindsight, what would you have done differently? I think differently, I would have planned. I would have had those difficult conversations with your, your boss slash, uh, soon to be grandfather. <laughs> I, did a, I would have done a much better job um, setting up my calendar so that I 
I was actually able to be out a normal period of time. I don't know if I would have would have enjoyed a full six weeks because I've, I've always been very involved with the firm and I love practicing law. Um, and so I don't know that I would have been happy to like just doing not in, not practicing at all for six weeks, but I definitely would have um, created better boundaries as it relates to kind of the work life balance during that period of time. So I can only see for myself, but I feel like that first transaction transition back to the office for me was really hard. I think mostly because again, I'm only speaking for myself, but I was working a lot prior to me having children. And then all of a sudden I couldn't work as much as I was. And so it was just a completely different rhythm. So how did you sort of navigate that transition? Yeah. So I think it just, it, you know, you learn the hard way. <laughs> So I think that, you know, what I did is just, you know, eventually kind of try to um, be organized, slow things down a little bit, um, make sure that, you know, I, I was doing a lot of work probably after hours or while the baby was sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just try to try to be as organized as possible so that, you know, the clients get what they need. But at the same time, you're taking care of what you need at home with the with the newborn. Yeah. So to fast forward to baby number two. So where were you there at that point in time? And talk to us about that transition. Yeah. So baby number two came when I was 35. So, you know, still litigating, still very, very busy at the office. I did probably a little bit better job navigating this, that, you know, that time. Um, I think I definitely marked myself out for like a longer period of time where I wasn't having to be back so quickly. Um, at the office, it was at that point, my dad's uh, partner had passed away. So it was really just me and dad. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, I just think that I probably just did a little bit of a better job. But I still, as you know, I've discussed before, I just I'm not very good at just like taking a moment. I mean, even when I'm on vacation, I feel like I'm checking into the email in the morning and the evening. I'm handling emergency phone calls. I mean, that's the double edged sword with regard to a small, you know, firm is that you you can't just like take your days and check out because there's a team to take care of it for you. And, you know, we're very passionate about our businesses. You know, this is our this is our baby. And we want to make sure that everyone knows that we're accessible, that we care, even when we have these major life changes, whether it's having a baby or going on a vacation or even when we're sick at home with COVID. Right. <laughs> But that, that's a difference, in my opinion, between probably a really successful business owner and someone that maybe is not so successful. Um, you know, when you're physically there and present and available, um, you know, you, your clients know that, they appreciate that, and they, they come to you and they come back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Liz, it's, from our previous conversations, it's, it's my understanding that your secondborn child is disabled. And I know that that comes with additional challenges. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So, yeah, so Benjamin was born with a migrational brain defect. And what comes along with that is epilepsy, um, learning disabilities, things of that nature. Um, and anyone that has had a child with any kind of a disability, um, you know, you just have to wrap your head around something that you never anticipated would be part of your life. So um, I've been so blessed to have my in-laws uh, close by, um, again, living next door to my mom and dad. Um, and so, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a whole nother world out there. Um, you know, and so many times too, I think, when people are faced with um, disabilities, you know, with family members, you know, it's such a challenge sometimes. And you have these, you know, these mornings, you know, if Ben has a seizure, like that kind of sets the tone. Um, or if there's an issue, you know, if there's a, a meltdown or there's a problem at school, um, you know, and so for me, um, you know, I have I have real, I, I'm, I have great faith that, you know, God has his hands on this and everything, you know, is the way it's supposed to be. And that mm -hmm. has given me this amazing ability to better prioritize mm -hmm. what's important in life. And so I think, you know, Benjamin has been such a blessing to everyone that he meets for so many different ways. But one of the, the best things that has happened in my relationship with my, with Benjamin 
is that it really makes me focus on what's important in life at the end of the day. Um, and so, you know, it's just, it's just a lot, you know, and, and it's also helped in my practice. I mean, the 504 plan, the IEPs, um, the medication with regard to, um, you know, the type of, uh, things, you know, diagnosis that he has. So I, I many times have actually found myself helping school my judges about, you know, this is the medicate, the psychotropic medication that addresses this issue. Here are the side effects. And, you know, here's how important it is that it's taken on the same time every day with the same dose. And when you're dealing with those, you know, parenting issues in those kind of situations or with regard to, like I said, the IEPs and how you handle those meetings and and what is available to these students um, uh, under Illinois law and the school code. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's a, you have, it's a blessing all, all around. But like I said, primarily, honestly, it's just helped me really focus on what's important in life. So what advice would you give to our listeners, a working parent on this listing that maybe has a disabled child who, who is sort of struggling with just like all, all the things and the responsibilities right now? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you just have to lean in on the family, on your friends. Um, if you, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, some of my my friends are as close to me as family members. But sometimes you have to, you know, and again, you know, I, we are very organized, type A, in control, everything's going to be fine. Um, but sometimes it's not. And so it's okay to take a minute and say, you know what, I'm waving my white flag. <laughs> I need help in this moment. So I'm so blessed with my staff here. You know, everybody knows at the end of the day, you know, sometimes it's okay to not have it all together and just to say, I need help. And that's, again, when I talked about the double-edged sword of a, a small business or a small law practice like you and I, you know, you're not working for, you know, 20 or 30 partners that don't care what's going on at home. You know, you're saying to the your staff and or opposing counsel or the court, you know what? I can't be there today. So I, I need a continuance. I'm not, this is not going to happen today, or I need an extension on a deadline. And uh, I have found uh, in, especially in the rural practice, uh, having spent some time in, um, you know, in Chicago in a more urban practice, that people are very accommodating and very understanding here. Um, you know, in, in, at least in downstate Illinois, I know you've spent time in New York and, and in, in the city environment as well. Um, again, I love practicing in Chicago, but it's definitely a different dynamic because you're not necessarily in front of the same judges and you're not necessarily interacting with the same opposing counsel. Down here, you know, we're we're all kind of a, a big family at the end of the day. If I ask for an accommodation today, you know, you might be asking me one for tomorrow. Uh, so it's been very fulfilling for me to to have that uh, have this experience here in, in Shelby County. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Liz, you mentioned your father, you know, previously, and I, and, you know, for full, full disclosure to the listeners, like I grew up with your father, and um, he would come to track meets, and I would hear his voice over across the, the track field, you know, telling me to run faster, run faster. And, um, you know, your, you know, he, he was such an inspiration. And, and anytime I'm asked, like, you know, about how, why is it that I decided to practice law, you know, and, you know, your dad was literally the only really role model that I had as a, as a lawyer growing up prior to basically me being in Washington, DC and being surrounded, um, with, um, lawyers at that point in time. And I know that your father has passed. And so if, if you feel comfortable, do you want to talk a little bit about sort of that tragedy and navigating that because at the point in time he was running the firm, you were his associate, I believe, and your whole world just sort of flipped upside down. Yeah, that's a that, that's definitely a fair way to summarize it. Um, he passed like two weeks before Benjamin's first birthday in a like a tragic car accident uh, while he was on vacation with my mom, and. Again, you know, you you never you just never can 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 be ready for something like that. Um, he was the managing partner of the firm. It was just the two of us, and you know, I, I it took a minute. I was really really you know pondering like what my path is supposed to be, um, and so you know, I just once again I leaned in, I dug in. We had fantastic staff. 
I had tons of family support. The clients were amazing. And everybody gave me the time I needed to just take a breath. Uh, my uncle, David Eberspacher, my dad's brother, was practicing in Coles County at the time. He came here and he was amazing, just kind of going through all the files with me and deciding you know, how, what we could keep and what we should do. And then honestly, it just organically settled and everything just went okay. Um, everyone was so accommodating, the judges, the attorneys. Um, and I just had to, again, take a moment to say, you know what, I don't have this. I, you know, I, I, I need, I need help. And, you know, when I called uncle David and again, the staff was fantastic. I had other attorneys that came in to help me, um, uh, with handling, uh, files and we were able to, to navigate that. And that was back in, um, well, 2012. And so here we are, um, you know, uh, what is it, almost 14 years later, unbelievably, and it feels like he was yesterday, but, um, you know, we're just, we're just doing the best that we can. Dove and Dove has been around for over, you know, a century. It's a fantastic firm and I'm so blessed to continue, um, you know, the charge of Dove and Dove and, and how important it is for us to give the, the best legal service available in the, in the circuit to the client, to our clients. And, um, we just have a fantastic relationship with, uh, all of our, uh, past, present, and future. And uh, it's just, you know, it's a very rewarding practice. Um, and so I, uh, I miss him so much, uh, but he taught me well, and he was a great mentor to me as well. And uh, I just, uh, I just am very thankful that I've been given the opportunity to continue this longstanding tradition um, of, yeah. of providing that legal service through Dumb and Dumb. Yeah, he was a fantastic attorney. And, you know, listen, Liz, I know that you, whenever you and I talked previously, that this running the law practice was not in your five year plan when you moved to Shelbyville. And, you know, I had the luxury of thinking about, like, do I want to be a business owner? Do I want to open my own law practice for a long time? You were just thrown into it. Yes. So how I was. was that adjustment while having basically two toddlers at home? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I thought about a minute if this is really what I wanted to do. I mean, I prayed hard about it and I had very tough conversations with family uh, because you're right. The, the five-year plan was for me to work with my dad. We were going to be partners and he was very active in the practice. And um, it was never that I was going to have my own firm. That was not anything that I ever even thought about. Um, and so, you know, you just have to, again, have those deep conversations and then just make the best decision you can based upon the circumstances that exist at the time. But I had you know, four staff that I just, you know, I wanted to make sure they were continue to be employed. And like I said, we had a huge amount, a number of clients um, that, you know, were just, you know, so supportive of, you know, whatever I needed so they could remain clients of the firm. And so I did, I felt a responsibility to carry on the family firm and to do what I um, needed to do to be able to continue servicing the clients. And I don't regret it. Um, you know, we have those days, all of us, uh, billable moms, whether you do uh, are in a law firm or you're a, a small business owner where you wonder, is it really worth it? This is so much, this is so stressful. This, this incident happens, you know, this maybe uncomfortable interaction, whether it's with a client or, you know, whatever, but you just have to, again, as long as you're just honest and try to do the best job you can based upon what you've been faced with, you have to have faith that things are going to be okay. And, so far, everything is okay. <laughs> so uh, resilience is the word that really strikes me when I think of you a lot because you have you have really have have done such a phenomenal job through these various challenging chapters, and one of which is your husband had had an accident as well, and 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 he's doing very good now. But why don't you talk to us about? like where you were as a working parent when you were navigating uh, Jeff's incident? Yeah. So when, when J my husband was in a, um, a UTV accident um, and it was uh, in the fall of, uh, well, let's see, William at that point was in fourth grade. And so Ben would have been in first grade and um, you know, my dad had passed. And so I was still, you know, only a couple years outside of that. Um, and the, you know, he, um, he had a, a brain injury and, uh, he lost his memory for about three months. And then we had to move to a rehab facility in Chicago, um, Shirley Ryan. 
And I did that with the help of my mom and Jeff's mom, because we just took turns uh, training it to Chicago and then taking care of the kids. But the, the outpouring of support from my opposing counsel is what I remember during that period of time. Um, because everything just had to just kind of be on hold. And everyone was amazing. The, the opposing counsel, they didn't ask any questions. I had judges and attorneys calling me while I was at the hot, we were, we were at Springfield Memorial. Then we went to St. Louis and we went to Chicago and they would call just to check on me. Um, and so I developed some very important relationships with attorneys throughout Coles County, Effingham County, and otherwise, um, through that process that you know, just the out, outpouring of support. So yeah, we got through that again, every, everybody has their drama, but it seems like I get quite a bit <laughs> thrown my way. Um, but again, for me, it was just my faith. It was, this is okay. We'll get through this one day at a time. You know, I'm just, I'm that person where, you know, no matter what you throw at me, um, I'm going to keep navigating and I'm going to get through it. I'm not going to ever be that person that says, woe is me. Um, we're just going to keep pushing along and, and getting to the, to the other side of it. So Jeff's great. He, um, you know, he does have a traumatic brain injury, but he's able to go back to work. He works for the city of Shelbyville, uh, running their park. Um, and, you know, he, he loves, he loves his job. You know, he did, he could have, you know, maybe done something different with regard to disability. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to get back to work. And, and that, you know, that's one of the reasons why I love him so much. I mean, he and I both have very strong work ethic and we love our community and we always want to give back. And, um, so yeah, our little family is just, we're, we're doing fine but it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I, you know, obviously offering like phenomenal legal services throughout all of those different, you know, challenges. Liz, we're going to take a quick break and hear from our sponsor. But when we get back, I want to talk time efficiency hacks because I know you've got them. Got it. This episode of the Billable Mom podcast is brought to you by Rinker Law PLLC, focusing in food, farm and family. When I'm not a mother juggling two littles, I'm the principal attorney of Rinker Law, where we believe that strong communities have both strong families and a food, fiber, and agriculture system. At Rinker Law, not only do we do family and matrimonial law, but we also work with entrepreneurs and agriculture producers on business, estate, and succession planning. We are a client-focused, results-driven law practice at Rinker Law, we also support other billable moms, not only here in the workplace at Rinker Law, but also with clients, helping them live their dreams, both in business and at home. For more information, visit us at www.rinkerlaw.com, Carrie Rinker, Rinker Law, Food, Farm, and Family. All right. So Liz, I feel like being a working parent has shown me how precious time is, especially at the office. I feel like I need to make the most out of every like hour that I have. And so talk to me about sort of your tips and tricks in that regard. Yeah. So, um, I'm very like checklist oriented. <laughs> I always have a list going, whether it's a grocery list, a to-do list for the day. Um, so I think that for me, at least, that's that's critical to the organization of running the firm and the family and, and my own life. Um, but I also prioritize um, my health. So, you know, I am a runner. And so, you know, getting my run in every day is, is on the list and actually just keeps me um, tasked. I need to get this done by this time, this time, and then I've got to get that jog in. And then the, you know, the dinner's planned and prepped. And um, so just being organized about it and having my, in my mind, you know, how I'm going to handle things, it keeps me definitely, you know, efficient, but I got to give a shout out to quick scribe dictation because I have that dictaphone with me in the car at home, at the office and being able to dictate my thoughts of what needs to be done, et cetera, is just imperative uh, to, being organized and making sure that nothing is missed. And then of course, just having fantastic staff. I mean, I've been so blessed to have the staff that I have here. Um, I've had my administrative assistant, um, Deanna Yantis has been with me for, you know, 20 years. And then, um, 
the people that I have hired here, are, they're actually friends. You know, uh, Brittany Hardy is my assistant. She's one of my best friends. Um, I have um, Beth Logue, who I grew up with. We went to church together. I have Jeanette Reed, who's been with us now um, for at least four or five years, um, who came over from uh, Christian County. And so we're, you know, we're, we're a family. We text each other. Um, we wish each other a happy birthday. We like to go on vacation together. And I think that's critical to the success of a firm because we're all so invested not only in the firm's success, but in each other's success. And I care a great deal about the girls and um, their families and having family time. We prioritize that here. In fact, we changed the hours of the firm to close at 4 p.m. Um, years ago. Um, and, you know, the firm used to be open Saturday mornings in the day. You, you, you might remember that growing up here. You know, Dove and Dove was open from 9 to noon every Saturday. Well, I eliminated that pretty quick after my first child. Um, and then now in the summer where we close at noon, um, on Fridays, so the girls can be with their kids and their grandkids over summer break. Um, and so, you know, that does cause a little stress on a Friday morning to try to get everything done, but it's a minor price to pay so that the girls can have time with their families. Yeah, that's awesome. So to take one of those tips one at a time here, starting with quick scribe, because I am not like fully a dictator. I, um, a, an app called copy talk was recommended to me It's actually an app on my phone and I dictate sometimes. And then I get, uh, emails with a transcription. Like how, tell me how quick scribe works exactly. And like, how do you utilize it? Yeah, absolutely. So quick scribe, is it just a traditional dictaphone? So you talk into it and then when you put it into its docking station at the office, there's a, um, a basically a screen that comes up and you choose who it goes to. And then it goes mm. to them verbally and they each have earphones and they pull up in the morning and see what's available for them. But I'll send that, like, it's not always convenient to be on email, right? Whether it's just you're driving, <laughs> that'd be one reason. Um, but you know, when I go home, sometimes it's, if I'm sitting in bed, you know, I don't want to be texting. I, it's easier or emailing. It's easier just to dictate and say, okay, listen, I don't want to forget on Monday, you need to, you know, get back with me on this or that, or I got a, I got a phone call from a frantic client Saturday night, you know, this is happening. See me on uh, you know, Monday as it relates to an emergency motion. Um, so I love dictation just because in, in the dictaphone with QuickScribe, you can actually dictate to one person, for instance, and then just choose a different folder. So then when you put in your docking station, you can say, oh, that one goes to this person, that one goes to that person. So it's just, for me, it's just a very efficient way to communicate um, with your staff uh, when you're off hours. I also like dictaphone because sometimes when the girls are overwhelmed and I'm like, oh, I can tell everybody's got so much going on right now. See, if you send that one more email, you know, it's just like, oh, that's too much. So I'll dictate my thoughts and then hold it. And then when I know things have slowed down a bit, then I'll send it on to them. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good suggestion because I feel like um, when I finally get caught up, like everybody else around me is completely buried. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's like just like a, a tug of war. Um, 100%. So to shift gears, because I know like you have, have loyal staff that have been with you and you know i have made some great hires along my career and i have made some not so great hires so tell me how you find good people the right yeah. people well i definitely have not always had the right people that's for sure um but i think that that at the end of the day especially where i sit right now i think you have to do a deep dive as it relates to someone's morals their character um, their work ethic, um, and then make that decision. Because, um, you know, as you and I have talked about, when you meet someone or you look at their resume or their prior work history, that doesn't, it doesn't necessarily take you to that second level of, is this a person I want to work with? You know, you spend, we spend more time with the people in our office than we do with the people that we love. I mean, we're here all day, um, sometimes weekends, um, and they're the people that, you know, are critical to our financial survival, not only for the success of our business, but being able to, you know, earn income to support our lifestyle. Right. And so for me, you just have to do that deep dive. The, the times that the people that have, been, have worked here at Dove and Dove that hasn't panned out, it's really about just the fact that we're just not on the same page as it relates to, 
you know, our goals, whether they be lifetime goals, professional goals, et cetera, um, and our approach to, you know, to the practice. So that's my advice. <laughs> so I, I think it was in the book, Emeth Attorney, but the advice that was given in that book was basically just hire good people, hire good people that with the ability to learn and you can teach them everything that they need to know. I have found that that is easier said than done. You know, it's not so easy to always teach people all the things. And, um, and so what are, what are sort of your tips on sort of managing an efficient, efficient team? Yeah. So, and again, you and I have chatted about this. Um, you know, three of my four girls here, uh, came on board with zero legal experience, zero. Um, but they were good people with good work ethic. Um, common goals to to be successful. Again, I I knew three of them um, most of their lives, um, and so you know I think that's that's where the team comes in. Do we have the common goal of the success of the business um, and to service the clients, you know, in the same way, in the same manner, the best way possible? Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, and, and efficiency. You know, not everybody here has the same personality by any means, but efficiency wise. I think checking in is so important, you know, in this remote world of Zooms and Zoom hearings. And, you know, I've never been a big fan of that. Um, I want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you. I want to know how your your sick, you know, daughter is doing. Yeah. I want to know what you have planned for your next vacation. Um, and then I want to talk about, you know, what is your to-do list? Where are your priorities for what you're doing here at my firm? And do they align with where I'm at? I, I talk to the girls face to face, each of them, no less than once a week. Um, and I have a sit down uh, with uh, my administrative assistant once a week where we actually have an hour blocked out. I don't always give her the whole hour because sometimes I'm double booked <laughs> in case she sees this. She's like, I don't get my full hour. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I think that face to face time is critical, not only to continue to make sure that that relationship is healthy, but also that um, to, again, be on the same page efficiency wise is where are we at. What have you got? There's more times than I can count. My girls will tell you during these meetings, I say, okay, give me this and give me that. Take that off your list um, because I can tell your list is too long. And I want to make sure that we're, again, we have the common goal of getting the work done. But um, I do that all the time where I say, okay, give that to me. Let me do that um, so that we can work as a team going forward. I, I don't care if I'm drafting a notice of hearing or a financial affidavit, I, I will do whatever is necessary to make sure the client's work gets done. Yeah. So to, to shift gears, this is something that I struggle a lot with is the separation with work and life. And I we are recording this podcast on a Friday and I am already starting to get stressed out about the weekend because I'm already starting to think about like, I've got a deposition next week I have to prep for. I have an emergency hearing I have to prep for. And like, oh my gosh, I need to get back to this client about the, her prenup. And it's my weekend. I need to be spending it with my children. And like, how do you navigate those stresses with I work? First of all, please know we are both in the same boat, but it is not a sinking ship. <laughs> So, you know, for me, again, it's all about priorities. I, I will sit down here when we're finished um, because, again, my office is very quiet now because everyone's gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I will sit and I will go through what I have to do next week. And I will say, OK, what has to be addressed this weekend? And I will yeah. take home probably, you know, one or two files with me. And then, you know, on a Saturday evening or, you know, while I'm waiting for my kids to get dressed for church, I'll do those things. Um, and so, you know, that's just important. And then just a couple of doing a couple of things like that makes things so much easier when we arrive on Monday morning. Um, yeah. And, you know, Friday afternoon uh, is going to be good for me to reach out to my opposing counsel for cases I have next week, confirming we're on board of the same page. See if there's an I've got one right now. I'm going to call when I'm done here about a settlement. Um, that we can hopefully reach before before a contested hearing. And so I think it's just about, again, unfortunately, again, it's our business. So you're going to, in my mind, to be successful, you're going to have to take some of the home carry, but wait till those kids go to bed before you pull that file out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so you are very communicative. You're very responsive on email. And then one of the things that I also took home whenever we had talked earlier in the week was that when you go home at night, you put your phone away face down i do feel like you keep it in a container right like this is my like i'm fully i'm fully here right now as a parent and then i'm gonna fully be a lawyer i mean am right. i mistaken on that 
Well, you are, but again, in case of my husband or my kids, <laughs> I'm not always successful, but there is phone downtime for sure. Um, and again, I've got two teenagers, both of which have phones. I have a husband, you know, who has a phone. And so you have to hold each other accountable. You're not quite there yet with your two, but you'll get there. And, you know, we have phone downtime where we say, okay, everybody, phones are down. We're not doing this. And I have not, uh, I have many nights where, you know, it's hard, but I'll, I, I'll hold, hold myself accountable and say, you know, to my husband, I, my phone's on silent. I left it upstairs. You know, it's not coming down tonight. Um, yeah. But like, as you know, though, especially in our practice, there are emergencies that come up. And so my clients know my cell phone is on my business card. You know, not very many attorneys do that. Um, but I, one of the things about hiring me and working with me is that they, my client needs to know if you have an emergency, I want you to contact me. And I've had some clients who are contacting me after hours. It's not an emergency. And I'll say to them, listen, I don't think this is an emergency. You know, if you want, if you want me right now, if you want my advice, if you want, you know, for me to, you know, log in my lawyer time, I will, but I really think this can probably wait till next week. And then they'll be gracious and say, you're right. Or they'll say, you know what? I do want you to log into your lawyer time. I, I need you to talk to me about this and I'll make myself available. Um, but many times too, I tell clients, just text me. And then when it's convenient, I'll get back to you. Um, so you just have to, you know, I'm not great at this, right? I'll be navigating this till the day I retire. Yeah. Um, you have to try to again set those boundaries, but at the same time, I think the reason that uh, we are so successful here, and, I, and I, I feel that I'm a successful attorney, is because my clients know I'm there for them. When they come to us, they are going through the worst time in their lives, and you know, sometimes we wear that counselor hat, um, and sometimes it's like there's no one else they can talk to about this. You, I am that person that they have to talk to, and I get that, and I respect that. Uh, but again, you do have to set boundaries as it relates to, you know, like you said, the the balance, right? The, the yeah. fight to balance it all is hard. Yeah, I struggle with the cell phone thing. I actually give my cell phone to all of my clients. It's actually in my retainer. Yeah. And I say that you can contact me if there's ever an emergency. And, you know, I'll be driving down the road. I'll call them from the cell and then they'll have it. And then all of a sudden I'll get like all these text messages. And I'm like, oh. Please, can you just? I know. Email I just try to be honest with the client. I mean, you know, attorneys. You know, we're not inexpensive. You know, especially mm -hmm. the ones like us that are like readily available twenty four seven. Right. So I just try to make sure the client knows. Listen, I want to make sure we're using your retainer wisely. I want to make sure that you understand that the you know, that this this could be expensive. And so sometimes they're like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I want to wait. Or they'll say, I don't care. Just tell. Please yeah. be there for me. And then I and then I will. So uh, to close, I know you suggested QuickScribe before, but are there any other software or other products that you would recommend for working mothers and trying to get them? Yeah, all, all so I mean, well, well, for for a lot of firms, the family law software is awesome. I don't know if you have that. But, you know, you're able to, of course, navigate child support maintenance formulas. It does spreadsheets. So if you're a lawyer um, with a small business, it's a really neat way that family law software for you to get some. Um, some neat demonstrative exhibits uh, for not very, very much. Yeah, I've never really thought about using family law software. You're like, like balance sheets, like asset and debt sheets. Yeah, so, I haven't used it for that. I probably should though. Yeah, That's they crazy. do. And, and again, um, it's, it's a really, it's got so much more bells and whistles available to it than what I use it for. Um, mm -hmm. But I do love family law software. I mean, the good old outlook, what we do without that. And mm -hmm. then with regard to um, the, uh, um, uh, calendaring with family because of course outlook calendaring is office but outlook calendaring with family um is it's called family wall it's a free app and so you um you know you download it and then you invite your family members and then you put their personal whatever's going on whether it's doctor's appointments basketball games because i am of course the you know the president of my household and so they're always looking to be saying so what do we have going on this week? So now that everybody has their own phone, it's nice for me to say, pull up your app and it's all right there. So I'm not very good at updating it um, the way that I should with changes. I need to, this is going to make me um, be motivated to do that. <laughs> And then I know that when we talked this week that you also like practice master for your law practice. For That's right. Yeah, practice master is our billing uh, software. Um, it's wonderful. You know, before in the olden days, um, the clients would not get monthly invoices. They would get kind of intermittent invoices. And sometimes it was months into their case. And then they would have like sticker shock about, you know, what where they were at. 
So I did this, I did this and I made this major investment for the client um, because every single month there's automatic generated uh, invoices and they see the date, the work that was done and the fee. So there's no sticker shock. Everybody knows every month exactly what's being done on their file, um, where they're at with regard to retainer. Um, and, you know, it was it was a major learning curve, but I, you know, it was it was my idea to, it was shortly after dad passed that it was worth the time and the the effort and the expense to get this done so that all the clients could be, you know, kept very aware as to the status of their files. Yeah, that's awesome. Liz, where can our listeners find you if they're interested in following up? So as you mentioned, I'm two blocks from you. <laughs> But I'm Dev and Dove Attorneys at Law. We're at 151 South Morgan in Shelbyville. We practice uh, all over central Illinois, primarily the fourth, fifth, and sixth circuits. Um, we, again, it's a general practice. Uh, I don't do any, um, uh, I don't do much med now, but I have a firm that I work with on those cases. Otherwise, we practice uh, all kinds of whatever legal issue comes into your life. Um, and so uh, we are welcoming new clients. Uh, I do have an associate that's working here. His name is Joe Strader. And so uh, he's, he just graduated and started this fall and he's doing fantastic. He just won his first appeal. So I'm very excited for him. Um, but uh, we'd love to, to meet you. We'd love to you know help out if anybody has anything going on. I love my mediations. I'm a licensed mediator, as you are as well. We, we love that. And of course, uh, I also am uh, one of three collaborative trained um, attorneys in the fourth circuit, you being one, and then of course, Twyla Orr. So that's always exciting to, to talk to about collaborative law and, and settling uh, the case in a, a less contentious uh, manner. Um, yeah, so I just wanna thank you for a minute, Carrie, before you close, because it is empowering for women to support women. Um, in our practice, especially with regard to uh, being a litigator, which we both are, um, it's unfortunate that other female practitioners are not, do not approach relationships the way that, that we do. So I, I appreciate your friendship and I, I appreciate you having me on your podcast, um, because women empowering women, especially in the legal industry is something that, um, needs more focus. Thank you, Liz. I so appreciate that. All right. Well, that's a wrap until next time. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Billable Mom. At The Billable Mom, we don't pretend to have the answers, but instead have all the questions. Please find us on social media and join the conversation at, at The Billable Mom on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter X, Pinterest, and YouTube. We also have a Facebook group where like minded Billable Moms find solidarity and provide a resource to one another. You can learn more about The Billable Mom and our picks for juggling work and motherhood at www.thebillablemom.com. You can also connect with Carrie Rinker directly on social media at Carrie Rinker. Until next time, let's calm the chaos six minutes at a time.